How are we doing guys? Welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Brain and this is my Haynes Hunter 600R project boat. Uh, where we're at. So I've snuck ahead a little bit. Don't worry, I'm gonna bring you up to speed, but I've got uh, my foam in. Now, I will revert back to how we put the foam in and uh, the do's and don'ts with that that I found personally was helpful and what you might find helpful if you are tackling the foam filling yourself. So be sure to stick around for that. Alrighty, well I'm gonna have a crack at filling the boat with foam. So we've got our voids all prepped. Well, I've prepped one void to start with because I'm just gonna do this as a little bit of an experiment this time uh, to see how much we need, uh, how long it takes to uh, cure off. Now, everything I've read about it, uh, it, it's it's quite straightforward. You apply equal volume parts of part A and equal volume parts of part B. Mix it for 25 seconds and then pour it into the hole void that you're going to fill or whatever you're going to be using that foam application for. Now, everything I've read up until now is pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is have two separate containers. I've marked A and B on them for simply pouring into. So obviously you want to pour into separate containers of each part first and then pour into one common container to do your mixing and then apply uh, using that. Some interesting facts about the foam. So it's not a waterproof foam. So don't think this is a waterproof application because it's definitely not. It will displace the water. So it, it is gonna give more buoyancy to the boat if you were to penetrate that hull and have water come in. But also what you've got is uh, a little bit of sound deadening that comes with that. Well, a lot of sound deadening and, and a little bit of weight as well. So I've got 40 kilos of foam to use. So that's gonna add 40 kilos of weight to the boat. Now, I'm just going to fill those voids uh, and then we'll cut it off flush resin seal the top of it with a coat of resin and that's essentially what we'll adhere our floor down to uh, so that'll be the, in between the stringers obviously and those cross members and it will glue down to that now some people like to drill holes in their boat between the stringers and the voids to drain water out yes potentially water can get in there and yes potentially that's a good idea the reasons i'm not doing that in this boat First, we're using vinyl ester resin. It is waterproof. Second, we're gluing the floor down to this. We're sealing the compartment right up and I don't intend to penetrate those compartments with any screw fittings or anything. So I personally can't see water getting in there and it will be glassed in really heavily. So they're the two main reasons why I am not penetrating those compartments between them. So if you're doing this yourself, feel free. Again, I am just doing this of what I believe is the best option available to me and suit my needs. Here we go, let's crack into some uh, mixing of the foam. Guys, it's really important when you're measuring this not to weigh it because part A and part B weigh differently. So remember, this is a mixture using volume. about 25 seconds to use it. See that foam has just started to kick now. That was basically a kilo, which should fill a square foot of volume depending on temperature. Now it is a little bit colder today, so I do not expect crazy distance, but I just wanted to uh, fill a larger compartment first, uh, just to 
have an understanding of how this stuff works before I continue to mix larger volumes. But as you can see, it's starting to certainly fill that void nicely. bore you guys too much longer with that it is uh, still expanding very slowly it's gonna take 24 hours to cure so we'll obviously leave it overnight and uh, see what it's like in the morning but uh, we'll give it a few days probably before we even cut it what I'm gonna do is clean some other compartments up and mix some more foam uh, pour some pour some more and then we'll assess and see where uh, this compartments at whether we add more to it all right guys so I'll put all the foam in now, uh, I'm going to let it cure overnight and tomorrow we'll come back and see how firm it is, see if it's ready to cut uh, with just a timber saw and what we'll do is we'll cut it flush. So I've tried to fill in all the little voids in that so we can get it flat and level and then tomorrow I'll make any minor alterations with some small pores of foam just to fill in the little voids and then we can resin seal it off. Now you can see guys, I'm definitely staying high here. That blade is dipping in and bending up, but it's definitely high on that side as well. So I'm pretty sure we've got plenty of material left on that. Plenty left to sand that down flush with the top of the stringers ready for our floor. So it will sand really easy guys. So don't be afraid to leave a good inch of material there just to save yourself time later. If you can get it all in one pour, you're going to save yourself half a day's work. So, What I also wanted to touch on, uh, the actual pouring of the foam. I didn't get a lot of filming of that because of just the speed that I was going at it and it was my first time doing it. So I needed to focus a little bit more on the foam rather than the camera. But I can give you some advice and that would be to really uh, do a couple of test pours and work out, get a feel for the foam and how much it's going to expand. And then work out roughly how much is required in each compartment. So these compartments here, you can see that was done with pretty much one pour. I did, I did do one little pour around the edges there, but that was sort of the perfect pour, one of the last ones I did. And that one's pretty good. This is pretty good, that's two pours. But as you can see, sort of as we work further back from where I started coming round, it was more and more pours. Now, the more pours you do, the more uneven it seems to get. Now, that does a couple of things. It makes it <clears throat> more difficult to fill the voids that you're creating by pouring more because every time it expands, it's sort of pushing out to the edges and creating more little dips and things. So, if you can get it in one pour, it's certainly, certainly beneficial to you. Now, that said, uh, I'm happy for this to be a two-step process, so what I'm going to do is uh, cut down this side now and try and stay as high as I can, sand it down to where we need it to be, and then we'll come back, clean everything up, and then we will foam fill all the little voids again. So, should only be one more step away from uh, sanding this down and prepping it for the floor to go down. <laughs> side come out a lot better because I stayed high with my cuts. Now there is a little concave there from the pour process where we just didn't get enough material in there and that's what I was talking about, about filling those voids. Like if you can get it in one big pour, you will get a nice flat cut across the top and be able to sand down. Whereas if you do multiple small pours, you end up with spaces like that. But guys, that's probably a really good place to leave this video. Uh, from here, it's very basic. All I'm going to do is uh, touch up those few spots, sand them back down. It's relatively easy. I won't bore you with that. And then before the floor goes down, all we'll do is resin seal. So it'll be an unwaxed resin coat. A few guys have been asking why we use unwaxed resin and waxed resin. So the crux of it is, is that 
unwaxed resin, which is a laminating resin, can be laid in multiple layers without sanding in between the layers. Now the reason for that is because the resin is not fully curing without the wax in it. So unless there's a sealant that goes over the top, PVA, uh, a flow coat which has wax in it, it's just gel coat with wax in it, wax and styrene, anything like that that's gonna seal it off will fully cure the resin underneath that. However, you cannot lay multiple layers on top of anything with wax in it because the resin will not stick to the wax so it must be sanded in between coats. Now the reason we, obvious reasons why we use laminating resin is to continually building up layers, building things while we're in the construction stage now and then basically we'll work our way out with either, what I've been doing is uh, places that aren't going to be seen so not they don't have to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye. We have used wax in our resin, so wax and styrene, 5%, mixed into the resin solution, and then laid that on, which is fully curing the fiberglass. Now, for anywhere that will be used uh, externally of the boat, for example, the sides of the boat here, which you're gonna see, that will be flow coat. Now, flow coat is a gel coat with wax in it. So wax and styrene, so that is gonna fully cure whatever's under there and give us that nice finish that we're after. Uh, I hope that helps guys with a little bit of understanding of wax and unwax resins. So I guess that's a, a good place to leave the video as I mentioned before. Don't forget, hit that like button if you liked the video. Drop us a comment if you feel like you want a question or anything like that and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. The notification bell will notify you when we post videos, it's completely free. All right guys, stay safe out there. I'll see you in the next one.